there is perhaps no bigger cultural, political organization in the country at the moment than the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh. Certainly none more powerful and possibly none more inscrutable. The Prime Minister of the country, Narendra Modi ji, was himself an RSS Pracharak. A number of leaders from the RSS today have dominant positions in the government. And in 2025, the RSS will complete 100 years. A large part of that had Guru Golwalkar or MS Golwalkar as the RSS Sar Sanchalak. We are going to revisit Golwalkar today and try and understand his relevance to the politics of today. What makes the RSS the kind of force that it is? What are the questions that need to be raised about the RSS that are often not raised in public conversation? That's the question we are going to raise. We are joined by Swapan Das Gupta, Dr. Vikram Sampat, Dr. Shamsul Islam, and by Sudhindra Kulkarni. I want to start with you, uh, uh, Swapan Das Gupta. RSS to complete 100 years in 2025. Do you believe that the RSS as an organization is to still be seen through the lens of a Hindu nationalist force that advocates a Hindu Rashtra, which its critics say is against the constitution of the country? And where do you see Golwalkar in this context? Well, thank you, Rajdeep. Uh... Well, I think, you know, if you were to look at something, an organization, a formidable organization, which is, a, which is about to reach 100 years, you can approach it in two different ways. Now, one is to take a strand from the middle and then say that defines the whole thing. I mean, it's like suggesting that the Congress, as of today, should be defined by the Avadi resolution which said a socialistic pattern of society. There's no doubt that Guruji Golwalkar was a very important person who created the RSS. His personal contribution was seminal. He also had a certain inspirational role and if you meet any of the old timers, they will all tell you how Guru Golwalkar knew everyone's name, their family, things, and there was a certain personal touch about it. But the point is, he also had certain, uh, a certain uh, perspective on India. Now that perspective is far more contentious, and it's not necessarily something which has continued over into the 21st century. A few years ago, I think three, or three years ago, Mohan Bhagwat, who is the present Sar Sanchalak of the RSS, gave a series of three lectures in Delhi's Vigyan Bhavan. What was interesting about those three lectures, that they mentioned the founder of the RSS, Dr. Hedgewar, they mentioned various other things. But throughout the three lectures, the name of Guruji Golwalkar was conspicuously absent. Now, these sort of things don't happen is a matter of coincidence. No, so there's is, a certain, no, is the there's RSS, a certain premeditation about this. No, so is the RSS, uh, is the BJP or indeed even the RSS trying to disown Guruji Golwalkar, I who, think, who we were told in the 1990s was one of Prime Minister Modi's heroes? Is no, he no, I think, no, no, just a minute. I, is he disowning someone who was seen openly as an admirer of Adolf Hitler, who in his bunch of thoughts, controversial as it was, say, said that Muslims, Christians and... Uh, uh, communists are our three enemies who must be rooted out. Is the BJP of today disowning the RSS as Golwalkar saw it, his vision of Hindustan or a Hindu Rashtra? Well, disowning is a journalistic e expression. You're a journalist. I, I would say that the term would be that Gol Guruji Golwalkar is a bit dated. Is dated? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Vikram Sampat, you want to step into that? Swapan Das Gupta suggesting that Guruji Golwalkar is dated. What does that mean? I, I mean, are we saying that someone who controlled the RSS for the longest time, for well over three decades... Uh, so judge him from the perspective of the 1940s, 50s, 60s. Okay. 
please go ahead. Thank you, Rajdeep, and I, I think I agree with what uh, Shwapanda said, and I'm talking about this as, a, as an outsider who's not part of the RSS. I've not even attend a, attended a shakha, and I don't know how uh, things operate there, but as a scholar who's looking at Hindutva movements right from the time Savarkar coined the word uh, Hindutva or popularized it, I think we, uh, in academic circles or in media circles, we conflate Hindutva and look at it as one monolithic entity. There is a very fundamental to understand the RSS, and that's what is my understanding uh, over the several years I've tried to, uh, you know, um, research about the phenomenon, is that there's a huge difference between a Savarkarite version of Hindutva and the Hindutva that the RSS practices. In the Savarkarite version of the Hindu Mahasabha, and we conflate the two as being the same, it was a very person-centric, uh, you know, movement. Uh, you needed a hero uh, who needed to be adulated, hero worshipped, and the philosophies and the fortunes of the organization were tied up very closely to the rise and fall of that hero. So as Savarkar became uh, unpopular following his, uh, you know, implication in Gandhi's murder, uh, you had the Hindu Mahasabha's fortunes go down. But it is the opposite when it comes to the RSS, where yoking the philosophy to one individual or what he or she says is not important, the larger cause was important. Uh, and so it could be the Sar Sangchalak himself, you, you can say he was there for 33 years, mm -hmm. but it's this flexibility which gives the RSS, some can call it opportunism, some can call it adaptability, but it is flexibility and the proof of the pudding is in the eating of it, that after 100 years and after facing so many problems, so many bans, so much demonization, it the, the RSS continues to thrive as probably the world's largest NGO, uh, while so many, the Hindu Mahasabha too dwindled away after Savarkar went away. So uh, this fundamental importance which gives them the flexibility to own, disown, what you can call appropriate different people and ideologies. So even Gandhi and some elements of Gandhi can be very easily adapted by the RSS and he becomes one of their Prata Smaraniyas. But that would be anathema to a Hindu Mahasabha Savarkarite for whom if Savarkar hated Gandhi, I as his follower cannot uh, you know, uh, idolize Gandhi. So that is one uh, important point. The other important point which I must emphasize to know the difference between, uh, you know, these organizations is even when constantly it is said, what did it do uh, for the freedom movement and so on. So I think the, a very controversial answer to that is, yes, the Sangh's role in the freedom movement is perhaps zero, but virtually zero, but then the Swayam Sevak's role in the freedom movement was very significant. And why I say that is Dr. Hedgevar, uh, when he came up uh, with the idea in 1925, Everyone was talking about how do we get freedom, when do we get freedom, but Dr. Hedgevar's idea was why did we lose our independence in the first place. Uh, that was more fundamental for him. So tactical, short-term approaches of agitations, uh, taking part in that, that was not important. Tactical planning versus strategic planning. So we lost freedom according to him because of a loss of national character. And so building that national character was so much more important than taking part in short-term, uh, you know, agitations. And so the philosophy of the Sangh has been that once we build this national character so much, we would like the Sangh itself to become redundant. The Sangh should fold up because everyone has been aroused so much enough that there is no need for an organization which uh, focuses on nation building. So I think these two fundamental bedrock of the RSS and for us to understand can they disown Golwalkar and still remain an RSS? They certainly can. Can they appropriate Gandhi and still remain RSS? They certainly can. Can they pick and choose a bit of everything and still remain? They certainly can. And that is what has made the RSS survive for 100 years and made it such a powerful and growing organization with so many offshoots, the Mazdoor Sangh, the ABVP, the uh, Vishwa Hindu Parishad, all of this. So unless we understand that and look at it through this, Achha, it's a hero worship organization, you can't question the leader, uh, we won't understand, I think, why the RSS thrives. Let's get a contrarian view. Uh, Professor Islam, you want to respond to what you've just heard because you, what Vikram Sampad is suggesting and Swapan Das Gupta is that one of the reasons why the RSS or indeed Goldwalker endures is because the RSS should be seen as a flexible, strategic organization that over the years has been able to build itself, to use Vikram's words, into the largest NGO. 
don't look at it through the narrow prism of just a political organization committed to Hindu Rashtra. Your response? It would have been wonderful if uh, this conclave, some RSS person, because they people are denying, uh, denying that they have nothing to do with RSS. They are not RSS members. If some RSS, RSS person, RSS card holder, though they say we do not issue any card, uh, so uh, that would be better, but I don't uh, agree to them. But they are broadly within the church of the uh, of the of the ideological uh -huh. framework. I don't think they will deny of the parivar. They uh -huh. both claim to be part of the sang parivar in different ways. Sir, Desai, sir, mera ye kehna hai ki ye हम जो टॉपिक है जरा उस पर हम इसको जर्नलिस्टिक चर्चा में ना बदलें बातचीत को हां आप बताइए हम जो टॉपिक है एंडोरेंस ऑफ गोलवालकर यस राइट और मैं एक जो आई वुड बैक टू डिफर विद यू कि आरएसएस इस देश का सबसे बड़ा कल्चरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है ये कैसे इज हाउ हैव यू अराइव्ड एट दिस कंक्लूजन डू दे इशू मेंबरशिप डू दे मेंटेन अ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ मेंबरशिप what is the basis of saying ऑलवेज सेइंग दैट आरएसएस इज द ग्रेटेस्ट इज द बिगेस्ट हिंदू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड RSS is the biggest cultural organization of India. I don't think that uh, I, I think that's not correct because they do not give membership. They do not maintain a membership record. That is one of the one of the organizations which has no record of membership, no no transfer, no uh, leaving the thing, and they they uh, run the government. And when you uh, talk of our prime minister, 13th uh, July. Talking to 13 July 2013, talking to writers, he said, "I am a RSS cadre, and I was uh, groomed as a political leader by Golwalka. Mm -hmm. So that connection was very clear. Uh, so, but what I would uh, I would like to emphasize, जिस पर मैं जोर देना चाहूँगा और मुझे लग रहा है कि ये मैं मजाक में नहीं कह रहा हूँ, लेकिन गुरु Golwalkar जी जिन्होंने 80 percent हिंदी में लिखा." उन पर हम अंग्रेजी में बात कर रहे हैं तो ये उनकी आत्मा बड़ा परेशान हो रही होगी मुझे लग रहा है कि ये ये जो है मुझे लग रहा है कि गोलवलकर जी ने जो 80 परसेंट हिंदी में लिखा और उसमें बहुत सारा मैंने जमा किया है हम थोड़ा उनके मुंह से जानना चाहेंगे और मुझे डर लगता है कि जो लोग नॉन हिंदी स्पीकिंग जो आर को या गोलवलकर जी को डिफेंड कर रहे हैं उन्होंने गोलवलकर जी को पढ़ा ही नहीं है खास तौर पर उनके सात वॉल्यूम जो 1970s में आर ने छापे थे और वो गायब हो गए वो कहीं मिलते नहीं है वो बारह वॉल्यूम में एक सैनिटाइज उनका एक बारह वॉल्यूम में है लेकिन श्री गुरु जी समग्र दर्शन जो सात वॉल्यूम है वो पूरा सब जगह से गायब है तो हमको पढ़ना चाहिए और मैं उसमें से कुछ आपको आपको पढ़कर सुनाना चाहता हूं मुझे लगता है जब भी इसका मौका मिलेगा जी धन्यवाद नहीं नहीं आप आप अपनी बात व्हाट इज इट दैट सेंट्रल पॉइंट दैट यू वांट टू मेक अबाउट गुरु जी गोलवलकर दैट यू आर ट्रबल्ड विद यूजिंग व्हाट ही कोटेड जी एक प्रॉब्लम ये है कि आरएसएस या गुरु जी को लेकर हम हम मुसलमान और ईसाई वाला सवाल जोड़ देते हैं उसके बाद फिर किसी और चीज पर चर्चा की जरूरत नहीं गुरु जी का जो आइडियाज हैं जो देश के बारे में सब कुछ है दैट इज फार मोर डेंजरस Far more dangerous and critical, and with that kind of endurance, India will not survive. What is that idea? The, see, 26 November 1949, Indian Constitution Assembly passed the Constitution, Indian Constitution. Uh, four days after that, RSS mouthpiece, English mouthpiece, 20, uh, 30, uh, 30th November 1949, and that is the time when Guru Golwalkar Ji Sar Sanchalak. What is the editorial? But in our constitution, there is no mention of the unique constitutional development in ancient Bharat. Manu's laws were written long before Lycurgus of Sparta or Solon of Persia. To this day, his laws, as enunciated in the Manusmriti, excite the admiration of the world and elicit in spontaneous obedience and conformity. But to our constitutional pundits, that means nothing. And he himself writing in Bunch of Thoughts. Bunch of Thoughts, page 20, 238. Our constitution too is just cumbersome and heterogeneous piecing together of various articles from various constitution of western countries. It has absolutely nothing which can be called our own. Is there a single word of reference in its guiding principles as to what our national mission is, what our keynote is in life is? This is exactly what's about Congress and their, uh, their so, so many drafts. You are saying he had no belief in the constitution. Exactly. He, had, he believed in the Manu Spriti, but that is 1949. We are in 2023. Uh -huh. 
but have they, have rss or anybody or these friends have rejected mr islam mr islam no, do you want finish. everyone to let me finish this? Please. no please. please you must answer this do you want what golwalkar said in 1949 to be a defining facet of indian politics have you have you do, do you want it no do, do you want no, it i am not it supposed to seen that you want gentlemen no, i am not supposed to, to respond you are RSS supposed to respond have rejected. you rejected it have, have you rejected you, have it? any forum of rss rejected it and about uh, tricolor 14th august 1947 they come out with an editorial those who have come to power through quick of it may give tricolor in the hands of hindus hindus will never accept it it has three colors and three colors are bad omen can i just have add you, to what have mr, yeah, have mr. Have mr. Have islam you, just said i will me. just just i'll take one no, minute i'll just saying, take one minute rajdeep yeah. i mean to the con i mean these were the times that he's talking about where there was a lot of churn and discussion about this uh, you know the constitution i'll just finish the uh, the constitution the constitution was being formulated Professor people Istanbul. had different views about it for tricolor i mean gandhi ji in july 1947 just before the tricolor was being adopted he wanted the union jack also uh, on uh, the tricolor and in august gandhi ji in his collected works uh, of mahatma gandhi you can go and check it out in august 1947 he says uh, if there is no charkha in the middle and you have the ashok chakra and not the charkha that he uh, you know uh, had i will not salute this national flag because i do not consider it as our national flag so is gandhi ji also then anti national because he said i don't want to accept the tricolor so they, this was a time of churn people were talking about the constitution people and how how is it so bad to have a different opinion about the constitution and say we should include different elements of it it's not the blasphemy as it is in some abrahamic religions no, to talk as... about a holy book and say anything against it is is uh, you know a renegade uh, let, let, just a minute sudinda kulkarni you are listening patiently you see uh, golwalkar the moment you get deeper into him will evoke stronger responses because of some of the comments he made especially in bunch of thoughts do you believe they are still relevant in 2023 that we should still be debating it given the fact that the rss completes 100 years in 2025 and the fact is most of the people in the government including the prime minister are from the rss should we be assessing the rss more dispassionately more clearly even looking at golwalkar in a more dispassionate manner rajdeep in 2 years from now rss will commemorate its centenary now if we look at uh, the evolution of indian political thought and indian political movements in the last 100 years we see four distinct streams there was the for the congress there was a the muslim stream there was the communist party of india founded in 1921 and the rss which came into being in 1925 now we see that the Cong the, Co the communist party is almost marginalized to the extent of being invisible congress has declined whether numerically rss is the largest ngo or not is a different matter but the fact is that it in indeed is a highly influential organization with uh, social influence and political hegemony and therefore we have to understand how the rss came from 1925 or even 1947 when it was really a marginal force to 2023 when it is at the center of indian politics both supporters of the rss and the critics of the rss should try and understand this objectively in the evolution of the rss one person who has played a very key role ideologically as well as organizationally is guruji golwalkar he was the sarsang chalak of the rss for the longest period 33 years from 1940 to 1973 and i don't agree that he is dated whether he was mentioned by dr mohan bhagwat in his speeches or not the rss does not regard him as dated and in any case if you see the evolution of rss thought and rss organization no one can say that golwalkar doesn't matter 
So his idea is still one. endure. Huh? His idea is still endure. Of course, they, they do endure. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how. As with many thinkers, his ideas evolved. Some of his ideas are certainly controversial and they must be re rejected and the RSS itself has rejected. And that's why those controversial things that the Christians and Muslims are internal enemies which appeared in his early writings, the RSS itself has disowned and they have been removed from the collected works of Golwalkar that have been published by the RSS. But I want to show, and here I would like to differ with what uh, Shamsul Islam Saab said just now about Golwalkar. You know, whenever we talk about Golwalkar or the RSS, we have to keep in mind, at least I think so, that there, is, there are two aspects. In, in one way, RSS has proved to be polarizing, which is not good for India's unity or social harmony. But the core of their ideas is also for the unity of India. And this, complex, this complexity, if we don't understand, then we fall into either being rigidly pro-RSS or rigidly anti-RSS. No, but and that please would be that they are coming in, you know, what and the word, the and you know, the positive spin would be flexibility, the negative spin would be chameleon-like. You will change yourself to suit the conditions at that moment. You know, uh, Rajdi, please give me two minutes. You know, please give me two minutes. Yes. Otherwise, this particular point about Golwalkar's thoughts on Muslims in particular mm -hmm. will not be properly understood. Please go ahead. Now, in 1972, one year before his death, he gave an interview to Kushwan Singh of the Illustrated Weekly of India. And Kushwan Singh, by no stretch of imagination, can be called pro-RSS. Mm -hmm. Now, he begins the interview by saying, there are some individuals whom we start to hate without even bothering to know them. Guru Golwalkar comes first in my list of such persons. Then he asks a question, what are your thoughts on Muslim issues? Golwalkar's reply, I have not the slightest doubt that historical factors alone are responsible for the divided loyalty that Muslims have towards India and Pakistan. Moreover, both Muslims and Hindus are equally to blame for this. He says both Hindus and Muslims are equally to blame for this. Nevertheless, it is not right to hold the entire community responsible for the guilt of some people. We have to win over the loyalty of Muslims with love and certainly by not, not by mob lynching. I am optimistic and I believe that Hindutva and Islam will learn to coexist with one another. Okay, this is one point number one. Now there is another very important very point. Quickly, Just give yes. me two minutes. You know, it's very important. There was another interview conducted by none other than the editor of organizer K. R. Malkani. K. R. Malkani asked him a question about uniform civil code, mm -hmm. you know, which is a topic that is so yes. current right now. Malkani's question, don't you think that uniform civil code is needed to nurture the sense of nationalism? Golwalkar's answer, I do not think so. What I say on this issue might surprise you and many others. But this is my view, and I must speak out the truth as I see it. Malkani questions, don't you agree that uniformity is needed to promote national unity? Golwalkar says, harmony and uniformity are two different things. For harmony, uniformity is not necessary. There have, alway there have always been limitless diversities in India. In spite of this, our nation has remained strong and well-organized, since ancient times, nature does not like excessive uniformity. And you know, one last, last sentence, he says, there is no basic difference between those who favor appeasement and those who favor uniformity. Those who favor appeasement and those who favor uniformity. I firmly believe that uniformity is a pointer to the downfall of nations. Now, this is Golwalkar. 
so iconoclastic. I, I take your point, sir. You know, I, I have exactly 30 seconds to give the three of you to respond. I'll start with Professor Islam. Effectively, what See, Sudhindra is saying, these are... Comp sir, hold the mic. Hold the mic in your hand. Sir, the mic. We need to get answer that if Golwalkar was dated, RSS ever rejected him and said, we disown Golwalkar, you never did it. And when you talk of, uh, Kulkarni Sahib, when you talk of that he united India, you know, what did he think about South Indian Hindus? Let me read again. You know, I had come not to talk of anything but read his writings, his speeches. Listen, he is talking in 1960, December 17, talking to his School of Social Sciences, Gujarat University faculty and teachers. Listen carefully. Uniting India, you know, uniting Indian Hindus in an effort to better the human species through crossbreeding the Namudri Brahmins of North were settled in Kerala and a rule was laid down that the eldest son of a Namudri family could marry only the daughter of Vesh, Kshatri or Shudra communities of Kerala. Another still more courageous rule was that the first offspring of a married woman of any class must be fathered by a Namudri Brahman and then she could beget ch ch children by her Are husband. We? Today this experiment will be called adultery, but it was not so. It was limited to the first child. So he, is belie he believed that... Hold the South mic, sir. South Indian, Hindu South Indian Hindus were of lower race. North Indian Hindus were, were superior race. The other thing, what did he say about caste? Savarkar, Golwalkar not one time, hundred times said, Hinduism, Hindu nationalism and casteism, Varna system are synonymous. You want to you want to know no, this no, no, one from minute, hundreds one and hundreds of places. Okay, you see there are quotes of Savar. No, no, Vikram, there are quotes of Savarkar which today, if you use them, will embarrass the BJP. There are quotes, as Sudhindra has said, which can be used also to suggest that there was another side but to it. Sahib is is that the reason why he endures? That because I can choose whatever part of Golwalkar I want. Rajdeep, as a as a historian, for me, cherry picking quotes like this can mean anything to anyone. I think you need to see a context in which a lot of these people wrote what they wrote and what I would like to... Uh, can I please, have, if, if what I, was this context? If, I, if you allow me, I will tell you the context. So, uh, I mean... Uh, Very quickly. Yeah, so I think what the, the answer is what Gandhi said. Like, only my latest views on any subject should be taken as my views at that time, not my earlier views. All these were political ideologues and thinkers and their views evolved over time. That way, Gandhi in 1932, when a group of untouchables went to him, as they were called untouchables, he said, I believe in the Varana system. I don't think it is odious. I think the caste system, there is, it's not a sin. And only untouchability is the only sin. Everybody cannot become a viceroy or a prime minister. It has to come hereditary. You can be, uh, you know, Varana is so important. And that was the fight between him and Ambedkar. Right. So today, if I just pick one quote like but this, I can we, tell we you Gandhi that Gandhi is also a castist. No, I'm telling Gold you Walker. one thing, Rajdeep, that, uh, you know, we Varana... Uh, can, can, we, can we have some civility? Can we let, let no, me no, finish? No, no, I, I, you're not letting whoever, me finish. Whoever talks of okay, Goldwater is uncivilized. Okay, finish, please. Well, you know, okay, you have exactly... Uh, I never interrupted him like this. No, you've got... Vikram, we are running completely out of time. I can't help that, Rajdeep. You should control okay, this Professor Islam. Start Professor Islam, allow him to finish. No, no, allow him to finish and then I'll, I'll, I'll let's see. So on the one hand, you say Hindutva is an ideology that pits Hindus against Muslims and Christians. Anybody who does that, I mean, common sense logic, I'll ask the audience here. The first thing would be to consolidate all the Hindus. If you actually encourage casteism and divide the Hindus into groups, how are you going to unite them as one block against the perpetrated enemy? So Hindutva in its own, I mean, strategic thinking, it cannot be casteist. And, you know, in 1966, when the Vishwa Hindu Parishad was formed, at the insistence of uh, Golwalkar in this very city of uh, Bombay then, uh, with Swami Chinmayananda, it passed a unanimous resolution which said, Hindavaha Sahodaraha na Hindu patito bhavet. All Hindus are born of the same womb and no Hindu can be a uh, fallen person. No, no, so so, so did I Savarkar mean, also the, distance the, himself from for sir, Hindutva to sir, survive. Sir, I take your point, but Hindutva the fact is many of the RSS are actually incompatible with Brahmin. each other. Were South Indian Hindus sir, of inferior race? No, no. Many of the RSS Sarsang Chalaks were upper caste uh, 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 Hindus and they remained so. Savarkar wanted to reject in a way the caste system, which is also true. Swapan Das Gupta, while you smile, I therefore want a final word to the big question that the India Today uh, asked there, why Golwalkar endures 100 years, why does he endure See, 30 seconds? You can, you, you can look at Gandhi as either a crank, you can look at Mahatma Gandhi as the apostle of enlightenment. 
Likewise, you can look at Golwalkar as a complete ogre or you can look upon him as a Santa Claus. Now, it depends on what politics you'd like to pre propagate. Okay. And I think we would go in for the Santa Claus politics. I wish we had... Raise a warm, warm applause, I ladies and gentlemen. I wish we had much... Are you giving me 30 seconds or no? You know, before, you know, I, I, I have a job to, uh, uh, but, but go ahead. Go ahead, 30 seconds. Thir you have to hold the mic for those 30 seconds. The need of the hour is to unite India as a nation and Indian society across caste lines and religious lines. And the BJP, when the BJP minister says, we don't need Mia's votes for the next 10 years, this is anti-national. When Uday Didi Stalin says Sanatan uh, looks at Sanatan Dharma and compares it to dengue and malaria, even that's wrong, absolutely wrong. So you're saying reject what a, what a chief minister says and reject also reject what Uday Nidhi Stalin, Stalin says. has said. Okay, the Both challenge, are wrong. the challenge of our times, therefore, is to unite people. Some uh, like it or not, Golwalkar today is seen as a divisive figure. We've cherry-picked some of you, various quotes of him, which may cast a very different look, depending on who views it. But I appreciate all of you joining us, and I hope that this Samvan continues without Vivad.